please. Good evening, everyone. Very good to see you all. Um, and let me say first, uh, Secretary Austin and I just concluded a very productive and wide-ranging discussion with our colleagues, uh, Foreign Minister Hayashi, Defense Minister Hamada. Uh, and this, of course, is ahead of President Biden hosting Prime Minister Kishida at the White House on Friday. It is hard to overstate the importance of the U.S.-Japan alliance. For more than seven decades, it's been the cornerstone of peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific, ensuring the security, the liberty, the prosperity of our people and people across the region. One of the alliance's enduring sources of strength is our ability to adapt it to meet the evolving challenges as well as the opportunities before us. Japan's new national security strategy, national defense strategy, and defense build-up program reflect the scale and scope of that transformation. These new strategies make clear Japan's commitment to invest in enhancing its capabilities to take on new roles and foster even closer defense cooperation with the United States and our mutual partners. We applaud Japan's pledge to double defense spending by 2027. Japan's strategies align closely with our own national security strategy, both in the key challenges that we identify as well as in how to effectively address them. We're committed to upholding shared values of democracy and human rights, defending the international rule of law, continuing to lead the world in tackling global challenges that no one country can solve alone, like the climate crisis and deadly viruses. We agree that the PRC is the greatest shared strategic challenge that we and our allies and partners face. We stand together with Ukraine against President Putin's war, which threatens the principles at the heart of the international rules-based order, including that all nations should be able to chart their own path and have their sovereignty, their independence, their territorial integrity respected. In the face of these and other challenges, today we discuss ways to deepen our coordination, including on allied command and control, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, joint and shared usage of facilities, increased bilateral exercises. More than ever before, we're buttressing the U.S.-Japan alliance through deeper cooperation with other allies and partners through both regional and multilateral bodies. In the face of the DPRK's unlawful and reckless missile launches, including the launch of a long-range ballistic missile over Japan in October, we're deepening our trilateral cooperation with the Republic of Korea to deter and, if necessary, defend against aggression. That's a pledge the leaders of our three countries underscored in their November trilateral summit. Uh, today, we held our first formal dialogue in this 2 plus 2 format on extended deterrence, namely to enhance the capability and credibility of our allied defense against a wide range of threats. Uh, in June uh, of 2022, Prime Minister Kishida became the first Japanese leader to attend a NATO summit. Japan is spearheading the NATO Asia Pacific Partners Group, demonstrating the growing synergy between our Atlantic and Pacific alliances. We're working together with our G7 partners to impose coordinated sanctions on Russia for its aggression in Ukraine and to help Ukraine repair, restore, and defend its embattled energy grid. We look forward to Japan's leadership in driving an ambitious agenda on these and other priorities during its presidency of the G7 this year, culminating in the Hiroshima summit. Uh, Japan has also stepped up to help our European friends diversify their LNG supply in response to President Putin's weaponization of energy. We're working to advance peace and security through regional bodies like ASEAN, whose centrality is vital to the Indo-Pacific and through the Quad, including by working with India and Australia to expand what we call maritime do domain awareness, basically giving our partners a better ability to uh, detect and respond to challenges in their territorial waters, like illegal fishing, trafficking, climate-related disasters. At the United Nations, uh, we're rallying member states to defend the rights at the core of the United Nations Charter. It's been less than two weeks since Japan took its non-permanent seat at the Security Council. Already, we see its leadership on key priorities, like peace building, Afghanistan, and the ministerial uh, that the foreign minister will chair tomorrow on the rule of law. And because our national security strategy is so bound up in our economic and energy security, we're strengthening our cooperation in these spheres as well. Uh, in May, we joined a dozen other economies that represent 40 percent of global GDP to launch the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which sets out a roadmap to help our economies grow faster and fairer so that all of our people can reach their full potential. Last month, we kicked off the first Japan-U.S. Energy Security Dialogue. Tomorrow, our governments will co-host the fifth 
Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Tokyo. We're constantly expanding the horizons of our cooperation, <laughs> beyond even our planet. Uh, later this week, the um, Foreign Minister and I will sign a new agreement on U.S.-Japan cooperation in space. This agreement has been a decade in the making. It covers everything from joint research to working together to land the first woman and person of color on the moon. The bottom line is this. We and our people are always stronger and more secure together. Today, we've taken yet another step toward tightening already incredibly strong bonds. With that, Yogi, the floor is yours. え、先ほどオブリンケン長官、ホスティ長官及びこの間に、ロシアによるウクライナ侵略といった国際社会は歴史の岐路に立たされることになりました。安全保障環境が一層厳しさを増す中で、今回のニチベ2+2は日米両国の戦略文書発表後のタイミングでの開催となりました。本日
米国から力強い支持の表明がありました。加えて、宇宙サイバー分野での協力進化、技術協力の推進、情報保全の一層の強化の重要性につき、一致をいたしました。また、宇宙における攻撃等への日米安全保障条約第5条の適用可能性を宣言することで一致をできましたことは、同盟全体の抑止力強化の観点で重要な成果でありました。第3に、沖縄をはじめとする地元の負担軽減を図ることの重要性について、改めて確認をいたしました。普天間飛行場の継続的な使用を避けるためには、辺野古への移設が唯一の解決策であることを改めて確認をいたしました。また私からは、地元への影響に最大限配慮,配慮した安全な運用、早期の通報を含む事件事故での適切な対応、環境問題などについても、米側に改めて要請し、緊密に連携していくことを確認をいたしました。今回の日米2プラス2の結果として発出をされました共同発表は、戦略的競争の新たな時代において勝利するための体制を取る、現代化された同盟のビジョンを提示するものであります。スピード感をもってこれを実行に移し、浜田大臣、ブリンケン長官、オースティン長官とともに、日米同盟を絶えず強化をしてまいります。私から以上です。Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks to everyone for being here. At the outset, let me thank my friend and colleague, Secretary Blinken, for hosting today's U.S. Japan 2 Plus 2 ministerial meeting. Thanks, Tony. Minister Hamada, Minister Hayashi, I want to underscore my support for the bold decisions that Japan has made in your 2022 national security strategy, your national defense strategy, and your defense buildup program. There is clear strategic alignment between the visions of President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida. It is a shared commitment to uphold the rules based international order. And to strengthen resilient partnerships around the globe. And the essential US Japan alliance is at the center of these efforts. Our respective defense strategies provide a strong foundation for our ongoing work to modernize the US Japan alliance. In addition, Japan's commitments to substantially increase. Its defense spending and to invest in defense institutions and infrastructure and capabilities will accelerate our alliance's efforts. You know, I'm grateful that we're meeting at such a consequential time as Japan strengthens its own defense and further contributes to regional peace and stability. Today, we welcomed a, an historic alliance decision to optimize U.S. force posture in Japan by forward stationing more versatile, mobile, and resilient capabilities. These actions will bolster deterrence in the region and allow us to defend Japan and its people more effectively. In an, increase, in an increasingly challenging security environment, We've decided that the 12th Artillery Regiment would remain in Japan and be reorganized into the 12th Marine Littoral Regiment by 2025. We will equip this new formation with advanced intelligence, surveillance, surveillance and reconnaissance, as well as anti ship and transportation capabilities that are relevant to the current and future threat environments. These posture updates adhere to the basic tenets of the 2012 realignment plan, and they will strengthen our alliance's ability to maintain regional peace and stability. We also discussed updating our alliance's roles and missions so that Japan can more actively contribute to regional security alongside the United States and other like minded partners. And so, in our meeting today, we strongly endorse Japan's decision to acquire a counter strike capability. And we affirm that close coordination on employing this capability will strengthen the US Japan alliance. We also discussed a number of key issues, including 
our shared interest in peace and stability in the East and South China Seas and around Taiwan, and our commitment to, de to the denuclearization of North Korea, and our efforts to increase multilateral cooperation with the Republic of Korea, Australia, and other like-minded partners, and our growing cooperation across all domains, including space and cyber. Now, as you've heard me say before, the People's Republic of China is a pacing challenge for the Department of Defense. Japan and the United States remain united in our concern over China's destabilizing actions. And I want to reaffirm the United States' ironclad commitment to defend Japan with the full range of capabilities, including nuclear, and underscore that Article 5 of the Mutual Security Treaty applies to the Senkaku Islands. And tomorrow, Minister Hamada and I will sign new arrangements that will increase opportunities for the Japanese and the United States defense enterprises to closely cooperate on advanced technologies as well as increase linkages between our respective industrial bases. In our close consultations today, have advanced our alliance's efforts to address common challenges ahead of President Biden and Prime Minister Kushida's meeting at the White House this week. I'll close by reiterating that the U.S.-Japan alliance remains a cornerstone of our Indo-Pacific strategy, and it's critical to upholding a free and open regional order. Our alliance is stronger than ever building on a foundation of teamwork, trust, and shared values that, that has underpinned our relationship for decades. And so there is no challenge that we can overcome if we continue to work shoulder to shoulder. Thank you. え、先般安全保障環境の厳しさを踏まえると日米両国には このウチュー・サイバー分野における連携の強化、地域において一層重要性が増している拡大抑止に関しても、オースティン長官よりも米国の考え方を幅広く伺いました。その上で、
、米国の拡大抑止がより信頼でき、より強靭なものであり続けるために、両国が進めていくべき取り組みについて議論したところであります。米国日米両国は、厳しさを増す安全保障環境に対応するため、日本における米軍の体制を最適化するための取り組みとして、2012年に調整された現行再編計画について、その基本原則は維持した上で、再調整を行うこととしました。第3海兵師団司令部と第12海兵沿岸連隊の沖縄残留は、前方に展開する米軍の戦力体制をより多面的な能力を有し、より強靭性があり、そしてより機動的なものとするためのものであります。この取り組みは、日米同盟の抑止力、対処力を大きく向上させるものであると同時に、我が国の防衛に対する米国の確固たるコミットメントを示すものであります。これらのの取り組みにについてはその実地に向け引き続き米側と緊密に協議していく考えです。また、私から在日米軍が安定的な駐留と活動にとって、沖縄をはじめとする地元コミュニティの理解が重要であることを述べました。引き続き、沖縄の負担軽減の努力を進めてまいります。本日、日米両国が将来の国家安全保障、防衛政策の道しべとなる戦略文書を策定した直後のタイミングで、防衛外交政策の責任者である4閣僚が一堂に会し、それぞれの戦略をどのように実行していくか、じっくりと議論できたことは、大変意義深いことでありました。今後、同盟の強化に向け、引き続き議論を重ねていく考えです。ありがとうございました。Hi there.、Uh, good evening.、Uh, thanks for this.、Um, uh, can I follow up on a couple of things that you just announced?、Uh, speaking about the Marine Littoral Regiment,、um, uh, both, the defense, both the Defense Secretary and Defense Minister spoke of the, increasing, the increasingly challenging security environment.、Uh, can you be more specific in what you're responding to? Is this specifically China? Is these, are these、uh, contingencies in Taiwan or potentially in the Senkoku Islands, North Korea?、Uh, and also, you mentioned the impact in Okinawa.、Uh, is there any concern that this could aggravate tensions locally in Okinawa? Will this result in a net、uh, increase in the,、uh, in the forces there?、Um, and、uh, if you don't mind,、uh, could I also ask about space? There have been some reports that space will now be included as part of the defense、uh, partnership. Could you, could you comment on that? Uh, and for, on the American side, if you, don't if you don't mind a couple of questions that are a little bit、uh, off topic.、Uh, to Secretary Austin, the situation in Ukraine,、uh, Solidar,、um, there have been lots of reports.、Uh, the Wagner Group has claimed to control it,、uh, and there's been another shakeup in the Russian military command. What do you make of this?、Uh, do you think that it's fallen?、Uh, what significance do you see?、Uh, and Secretary Blinken,、um, a couple of days ago,、uh, you're just in Latin America yesterday, but a couple of days ago in Brazil, there was, of course, the.、Uh, The unrest.、Uh, former President Bolsonaro remains in the United States. There have been some calls from the Democratic Party to、uh, make a persona non grata. How tenable is it to, for him to stay in Florida、uh, despite what happened a couple of days ago in Brasilia?、Yeah. Thanks very much. You want to start? So I, I, lost count, I lost count on a number of questions, but、uh, we'll try to knock them down. If we miss, miss one, then, then we'll double back. First,、uh, let me begin with. The question you asked on Solidar and whether or not it's fallen to,、uh, to the Russians.、Uh, at this point, we can't、uh, corroborate、uh, that reporting. Of course, I've seen,、uh, seen some of that reporting.、Uh, but you know that this has been a very fluid,、uh, dynamic、uh, environment, dynamic fight、uh, in that area. It's gone back and forth、uh, a number of times, and it, it really is、uh, some pretty brutal fighting.、Uh, but the Ukrainians have.、Uh, Uh, acquitted themselves very, very,、uh, in, a, in a very impressive fashion as they, they fought a very, continued to fight a very determined fight.、Uh, we are focused on doing everything we can to help make sure that the Ukrainians have the capabilities、uh, that they need to be successful in their efforts to defend their sovereign territory. You know, we've been,、uh, we, we talk, I talk to my counterpart routinely.、Uh, we're, We're going to conduct another Ukraine contact group,、uh, defense contact group meeting、uh, next week in Germany,、uh, where we'll get another, we'll get 50 or so 
ministers of, of defense together uh, to talk about what Ukraine's needs are now and uh, what they need to be successful going forward. So you've heard us say over and over again that, that we're going to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. And from everything that I can see from our allies and partners, uh, they feel the same way. So we remain uh, united in our efforts. On the Marine Littoral Regiment, uh, we believe that this, brings, this, this capability brings uh, uh, a tremendous uh, capability to the, uh, to the Alliance. Uh, we're replacing uh, an artillery regiment with an outfit that's, uh, that's more lethal, uh, more, uh, more agile, uh, more capable. And as you have seen from you know, what's been uh, published on this, uh, on this particular formation, it consists of uh, a, a combat element, which is a battalion size element, uh, a long range fires element, which allows us to, uh, gives us an anti-ship capability, which I think is, is very, very important. And, and also a logistical element that uh, helps sustain uh, the, the overall uh, regiment there. So uh, I think this is going to contribute in a, in a major way in our efforts to help defend Japan and also promote a, uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific. And that's really our focus. You know, Japan, we share a common vision with Japan to, uh, to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific, and all the things that we're doing, uh, you know, points uh, towards that, that, that direction. So I'm going to stop there and, and uh, allow uh, Minister uh, Hamada to, to comment, if you'd like.今のお話に関しましてですが、我々とすれば、あの沖縄におけるいろいろな今再編等々たくさんお話があったわけでありますけれども、これに対しては我々理解をし、そしてまた米軍との。調整も含めてこれから議論していくところが多分多々あるわけでございます。いずれにしてもこのこの沖縄の問題に関しては大変コミュニティとの関係もあり、我々の説明の努力をこれから重ねることによってこの問題に解決をしていきたいというふうに考
um, support one another is more important than ever. We're also committed in that light to bolstering technology cooperation as well as making joint investments in emerging technologies to try to further sharpen the competitive edge uh, of the alliance. Last, uh, last question as I heard it uh, with regard to Brazil. Um, as President Biden told President Lula, we stand with the people of Brazil, we stand with Brazil's democracy and its institutions. Um, the President will have an opportunity to uh, confer directly and closely with President Lula uh, when he visits Washington uh, in, in early February, uh, and uh, the President looks very much forward to that. Um, President Lula has called for an investigation of uh, the events of uh, January 8th. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of that. Uh, we've not received any specific requests from uh, Brazilian authorities. Of course, if and when we do, we'll work expeditiously to respond, uh, as we always do. Uh, and then with regard to individuals, uh, we're talking now about uh, people who are private citizens. Um, we've heard various public statements that have been made uh, by those individuals about their plans, but uh, we really don't have anything to add and it's not appropriate for us to comment on any individual's visa status. の また日米両国は昨年改定した国家安保戦略の中で中国の現状認識を共に国際秩序などへの挑戦と位置づけました東アジアでの中国の安全保障に安全保障上のリスクをどう捉えてどう対応していくのかお考えを聞かせてください。ま
日米の視察の共同使用を拡大し、共同演習、訓練を増加させることをコミットいたしました。こういった形で、われわれ、この日米同盟の抑止力、対処力を一層強化する必要があり、本日の議論も踏まえ、引き続き米国と緊密に連携しながら、日米同盟のさらなる強化のための取り組みを進めてまいりたいと考えております。以上です。I have a, a little to add because my colleagues have covered it so well. Suffice to say that, um, first, we are united in uh, ways that, at least in my experience over the last 30 years, we've never been uh, before. There's greater convergence in our approach, greater alignment in our approach, uh, both in terms of the way we see the challenges and how we propose to uh, respond to them uh, than, uh, than ever before. And I think that's very significant, and you've heard both ministers speak to it. The statements that we're putting out, or we've already put out uh, this afternoon, will reflect in detail that alignment, that convergence between Japan uh, and the United States. Uh, when it comes to, um, uh, to Taiwan, uh, I think it's very important to note that what we've seen from China in recent years, not recent months, recent years, is unfortunately, an effort to undermine the long-standing status quo, a status quo that's maintained peace and stability uh, for decades. Uh, we, on the other hand, want to sustain that status quo. We want to bolster it. Um, we oppose any unilateral change to the status quo by either side. Uh, we'll continue for uh, a calm, resolute approach to uphold peace and stability. Uh, Japan and the United States are united uh, in, that, uh, in that effort. Um, as you've heard us say, our alliance is a cornerstone of peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific, and the steps that we announced today uh, will strengthen the alliance's ability uh, to uphold the rules-based order that we are both very much committed to. I think my, our, my colleagues have, uh, did a, have done a tremendous, tremendous job of, uh, of outlining the, the, the key points here, and so I won't plow that ground again, but uh, I would just say that we, we really do remain committed to enhancing resiliency and interoperability between uh, U.S. and Japanese uh, forces and, and deepening uh, the operational cooperation. Uh, so uh, the things that, that we touched upon today, especially uh, the agreement to increase bilateral exercises and, and, and training, I think are, are, are a real powerful statement of that, of that commitment. So I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues on, on these issues going forward. Our next question goes to Rio Kiyomaya from Asahi Shinland. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Rio Kiyomiya from Asahi Shinland, Washington, D.C. Bureau. I have questions for each of you. Uh, first, Secretary Austin, um, while U.S. and Japan share the concern about the China's military aggression, how can the U.S. manage the relationship with China and avoid miscalculation leading to the contingencies. Um, and last October, you said that you don't see an imminent invasion of Taiwan by China. Do you still hold that view? And also, if I may, um, Japan decided to establish a self-defense force joint headquarter. From your perspective, what would be the ideal alliance, command, and control relationship between U.S. and Japan to enhance the interoperability and readiness? And Secretary Blinken, regarding U.S.-China relations, how do you plan to manage and build the um, relationship with China during your upcoming engagement with China? And also, what kind of role do you expect Japan to play in diplomacy to manage this relationship? And finally, to Minister Hamada and Minister Hayashi, um, there is a growing sense of risk about China's invasion of Taiwan. In the previous 2 plus 2 meeting, US and Japan welcomed the robust progress on bilateral planning for contingencies. How do you evaluate the current progress on bilateral planning for contingencies so far with the U.S.? Um, also, from the perspective of deterring China's aggression, how do you evaluate 
the recent U.S. announcement of reorganization of Marines in Okinawa into the Marine Littoral Regiment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think your first question was, how do we avoid miscalculation? Um, you, you've heard me say a number of times that it, it's absolutely critical that that leaders of uh, great powers maintain open lines of communication uh, and be able to talk with each other. Uh, and that way we can, we, we can avoid miscalculation wherever possible. Uh, and you see us continuing to try to uh, ensure that uh, we, we keep those lines open. Uh, and I would invite my, my colleagues uh, in China uh, to meet us uh, halfway there uh, and, uh, and, and work hard to keep those lines of communication open. Uh, and, and, and that is the, the primary and best way to avoid that miscalculation. Of course, you know, I believe that our forces are, are trained and disciplined to the degree that, uh, you know, they're going to do everything within their power to avoid any kind of misunderstanding or miscalculation. But again, that dialogue is enormously important. So, and then you, you know, your second question was uh, regarding uh, whether or not China is, whether or not an invasion of Taiwan by China is imminent. Um, you know, I, I won't second guess Mr. Xi, but what I will tell you what we're seeing recently is some very provocative behavior and, uh, on, the, on the part of China's forces uh, and their attempt to reestablish a new normal. So we've seen increased activity, uh, in, uh, aerial activity uh, in the Straits. We've seen increased surface vessel activity uh, around Taiwan. Uh, and again, uh, we believe that they, they endeavor to establish a new normal, uh, but uh, whether or not that means that an invasion is imminent, uh, you know, I, I seriously doubt that. So uh, we will continue to watch uh, and we will continue to work with our allies and partners to do everything that we can uh, to ensure that we promote peace and stability uh, in the Strait and in, uh, and in the region uh, overall. And uh, just quickly to, more broadly, to add to that on China, um, as you know, President Biden, President Xi had a very open, candid conversation during the last GD20 meeting in, in Bali, um, and they spoke about our intentions, uh, President Biden shared our intentions and our priorities, and we uh, got some sense of that from President Xi as well. As the Secretary of Defense just said, these lines of communication, starting with the President's, but also including uh, many of us, are vitally important, vitally important to, to keep op open and uh, I would hope to deepen, because as the Secretary of Defense said, uh, what we don't want is for any misunderstanding uh, to uh, veer into, uh, into conflict. Um, I will have an opportunity to travel to, uh, to China in the coming weeks to follow up on the President's discussions, uh, precisely to move forward on those lines of communication uh, between us. Uh, we, both of our countries, Japan and the United States, have complex and consequential relationships with China. And there are clearly uh, aspects of intense competition uh, between us. Uh, there are uh, aspects as well of cooperation. Uh, and it's important to see if we can pursue those. We hear from countries around the world uh, the desire for the United States, China, Japan to manage this relationship responsibly. And uh, if there are areas where we can cooperate that would be to the benefit not only of our own people, but of people around the world, whether it's in climate, whether it's in global health, whether it's in dealing with, uh, with drugs, um, we should pursue them. But we are going to compete vigorously. The President's been very clear about that. We're not looking for conflict. We'll manage the competition responsibly, but we will compete vigorously. And we will seek to keep these lines of communication open uh, and do all that we can to establish guardrails to prevent competition, as I said, from veering into conflict. における 
、まあ、最低化するための方策について、まあ、緊密な協議を継続することを決定をしたところでございます。またあの必ずしもご質問の趣旨を正確に捉えているかどうか分かりませんが、もしご質問がガイドラインについてということであれば、この日米ガイドラインに関する議論は、今日はございませんでした。日米ガイドラインの見直せの必要性について、まあ、普段に検討はしていきますけれども、いずれにしても直ちに日米ガイドラインの見直しが必要となるということを考えてはいないということでございます。私の方からは、あの共同計画についてはです、ね、2015年に作成された日米防衛協力のための指針の下、日米両政府は、共同計画を策定、更新することとしており、今回も緊急事態に関する共同計画作業の着実な進展を歓迎をいたしました。また、現下の厳しい安全保障環境に対応し、在日米軍の体制強化するため、再編終了後の在沖海兵隊の規模は維持した上で、第三海兵隊、海兵師団司令部のおよび、第十二海兵連隊を沖縄に残列させること、また、同連隊を2025年までに海兵沿岸連隊に改編させることで一致をいたしました。このような取り組みは、在日米軍の体制を強化するものであると同時に、日本の防衛に対する米国の揺るぎないコミットメントを改めて示すものであり、我が国が国自身の防衛力の抜本的強化と相まって、日本に対する武力攻撃や地域における安定を損なう行動に対する抑止力、対処力を大きく向上させるものだと考えております。以上です。では最後のご質問になります。えー、朝日新聞の田島さん。朝日新聞の田島と申しますよろしくお願いします今回の会談では日本政府が新たに策定した国家安全保障戦略や国家防衛戦略が主要な議題になったと思いますここでまず林大臣と浜田大臣にお伺いします反撃能力を含めた防衛力の抜本的な強化やその裏付けとなる防衛費の大幅な増加の意義や狙いについてアメリカ側にどのような説明をされましたでしょうか教えてください次にアメリカのブリンケン国務長官とオースティン国防長官にお伺いします。日本の防衛力強化の取り組みをどう評価されるでしょうか、また日米両国の新たな戦略が出揃ったことで、今後、日米の抑止力、対処力を具体的にどのように高めていくつもりでしょうか、また先ほど林大臣の方からのガイドラインの話がありましたが、日米ガイドラインの改定の必要性について、どうお考えでしょうか、よろしくお願いします。それではままず私からお答えをいたします。本日の2プラス2では、一層厳しさを増す安全保障環境における新たな戦略を踏まえて、日米同盟の抑止力、対処力強化に向けた今後の取り組みを確認をいたしました。私からは、我が国の防衛力の抜本的強化は、米国の能力のより効果的な発揮にもつながるということ、そしてそれは日米同盟の抑止力、対処力を一層強化するものとなり、地域の平和と安定のために大きな役割を果たすことになる旨を発言をさせていただきました。これに対し、アメリカ側からは力強い支持の表明をいただいたところでございます。えー、先ほどもお伝えをしたとおり、今回の日米2プラス2の結果として発出される共同声明、これは戦略的競争の新たな時代における同盟のビジョンを提示するものであります。スピード感を持ってこれを実行に移し、浜田大臣、ブリンケン長官、オースティン長官とともに、日米同盟を絶えず強化してまいりたいと考えております私の方からは、日本の防衛力の抜本的強化を速やかに実現するために、大幅に増額した防衛予算の下で、反撃能力を含めた新たな能力の獲得や、継戦能力の増強に最大限努力する強い決意を申し上げたところであります。今、林大臣からもお話がありましたように、米側からは日本の新たな安全保障政策を、同盟の抑止力を強化する重要な進化であるとして、強い支持が表明をされました
、本日の議論を踏まえ、戦後最も厳しく、複雑な安全保障環境の中で、反撃能力を含めた我が国の防衛力の抜本的強化と相まって、日米同盟が地域および国際社会の平和、安定、繁栄のためにさらに確保としたものでとなるよう、引き続きオースティン長官、ブリーケン長官、および林大臣とともに取り組んでまいり、所存であります。以上です。And thank you for the question.、Um, it's very simple. We heartily welcome、uh, the new strategies,、uh, especially because there is, as I said, and we've all said,、uh, remarkable convergence between our strategy and strategies and Japan's.、Um, we applaud the commitment to、uh, increased investment,、uh, to enhanced roles, missions, and capabilities that you've heard, to closer cooperation, not only. Between the United States and Japan, but as well with other allies and other partners on a bilateral basis, but also on a trilateral and multilateral basis. We already have a strong foundation、uh, that's only going to, to grow.、Um, as we read them, the, these new documents really reshape the alliance's ability to promote peace and, and protect the rules based order、uh, in the region, but also beyond、uh, around the world. I think what you're seeing in real time. Is an alliance that is modernizing, and the United States and Japan are working in lockstep to be prepared for the emerging challenges in the Indo Pacific and beyond. So, we could not be more,、uh, more pleased with the work that we're doing together, but also, and I have to say,、uh, for Japan's、uh, extraordinary leadership, I know、uh, President Biden will have an opportunity to share that appreciation with Prime Minister Kishida when he welcomes him here to Washington later this week. I certainly agree with、uh, Secretary Blinken. There is clear strategic alignment、uh, between the visions of President Biden and、uh, Prime Minister Kashida. You see that reflected in the, in the strategies as you put them side by side.、Uh, we are all focused on、uh, maintaining a rules based international order and promoting、uh, peace and stability in the region.、Uh, so, What you've heard us talk about、uh, today, the things that we discussed in the meeting, really bring that strategy to life. Optimizing force posture,、uh, agreeing to、uh, increase our bilateral、uh, exercises and training events,、uh, all of those things are, are real good indicators that all of us are committed to making sure that, as、uh, Prime Minister Hamada has said previously, we don't just write strategies. You know, we, 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 we do the things necessary to be able to execute them. And this is work that's never finished. Okay, we, so we will continue to、uh, work to optimize force pro,、uh, posture and, and,、uh, and increase interoperability so that we maintain a credible、uh, deterrent force.、Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues、uh, to, to, to do that, what I would call hard government work. But,、uh, but thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the press conference.